Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. I'll say hello to whoever's in chat. Who's here today? Oh, I say hello to a service stop. Hopefully that's how you pronounce your username. Welcome. We're going to be playing some more Portal today. Let me get the cover for that up. This is Portal. The 1986 game that described itself as a computer novel um, and was written by Rob Swigert, produced at Activision or for Activision uh, uh, by a small group um, owned by Activision, I believe. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's uh, let's take down our our background music gently and get ready for the game. Okay, that looks good. How's everybody doing today? I hope you're well. Uh, if anybody um, is watching along and would like to say hello in chat, then, then please do, you're very welcome. Uh, if you're curious about what we're going to be playing, I'm going to boot that up right now. Um, if you haven't seen any of these streams before, this is our fourth stream playing this game. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, it describes itself as a computer novel. And I think by my estimation, that's a, that's a pretty accurate way of, uh, of it describing itself. Let me get uh, visible for you uh, through these means. Yep, yeah, so you should see um, a chat window and... Oh, that's sorry, it's very loud in my headphones. Let me turn that down. I hope that's not too loud for you in comparison to my voice. It's quite penetrating, the um, the soundtrack to this game. It's not, um, it's not very loud, it's kind of notification sounds only, but... The, it's quite pitchy in comparison to, to a voice, so I might just turn that down a little little notch more. Um, let me know how how things are looking and sounding. I think I think the frame rate is pretty steady now. It did have a couple of dips earlier on after I'd um, started broadcasting on the loading screen. Um, but if you notice any problems visually or with the, the sound balance or anything, do let me know, and I will do my best to to correct that. So as I was saying, this is uh, a computer novel in the sense that it's the content is that of a of a prose novel, um, but it's broken up into uh, odd segments um, presented in the manner that it is only being accessed through a computer terminal. So we're getting things um, kind of in a database fashion or from several interrelated databases, um, but in a kind of a haphazard fashion. Uh, for you see, we are, this is the future, we are an astronaut returned to Earth from a failed mission. We've been in uh, suspended animation for a while. Um, and we found that um, the all the human structures on the Earth appear to be abandoned. I don't think we've, according to the... Um, introductory story which comes in the manual I don't think there was any sign of life at all which is a little concerning uh, definitely no sign of human life we have found a computer terminal that we are able to access through the uh, primitive means of a keyboard and mouse um, in Chicago the dome of Chicago and what we're doing uh, is trying to piece together what has happened to the human human species uh, while we've been away, with the aid of um, a character you can see on the bottom right of the, the interface we've got here, Homer, who is a storytelling AI. Now, I personally, I've got doubts whether Homer is telling us the objective truth, I th because we're, a lot of the material we're being presented with is being packaged up in the form of a prose story in little segments. Um, that's courtesy of Homer. Uh, so I think he might be taking the elements of uh, all the the facts of uh, human history since we left um, that are kind of appearing in a disjointed fashion because the the computer systems are failing. They're um, they're crystal-based storage 
methods and the crystals are breaking down. Um, so I think with limited information um, and it's an intermittent um, additions of information, I think Homer is piecing together what it thinks will be um, a satisfying narrative for that. So that's what I think is happening. But you can also read it that we're, um, Homer is just letting us know the objective truth. Um, and I believe last time we left off, we were in central processing to save, and we noticed there were some new entries there. So I'll, I'll read those couple, um, and you'll, if you haven't seen it, the game before, you'll get an, an idea of uh, of what we're dealing with here. Yeah, here we go. So all the entries we've read before have this um, double chevron next to them. Um, and hang on, I'm just going to close a little window over here. That's good. There we go. Um, and I click back into my window. Is that good? Might be good. Oh. Oh, I think I accidentally tried to click on a previous thing. Oh, it says access denied, file no longer available. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. I assumed, and I hadn't really gone back to test it, that previous entries in the database would always be accessible, but they're not. After you get to certain, so this is one one we've read, but it's the only one in this um, uh, this category that we can come back to. Oh, well, that was a fascinating accidental discovery. Uh, well, this is the format of the. Um, it's kind of nominally a Windows-based system, but it's uh, very primitive. Um, it is as Windows-based as the Amiga was, which is to say, functionally not very. Um, we can kind of tab between uh, overlapping elements. So typically, we get um, a bit of a bit of text, so it could be, could be written um, kind of in a fictional, non-fiction style, um, and an illustration of some kind, which could be a symbol. Or can be more more of a um, an illustrative um, interpretation of what we're reading about. So let's go back to the main window. And let's have a look at. I believe this is called Biopsych Chambers. Oh, okay, short one. Zero five zero one two zero seven zero. Devor Peter. Lock Springfield, West Warren Flag, Temporal Component, Biopsych Chambers. Peter's time in chambers approaches maximum recommended daily limits. Interesting. So Peter DeVore is the um, main protagonist or antagonist? Because we're, we're not really in the story. We're, we're the audience, really, for the story. Um, but... Peter seems to have been involved in, if I, hang on, just tab windows again, there you go, Peter DeVore should be in view in the, the notebook there, so you can read some of our notes about him. Um, I started taking notes because I wasn't quite sure how um, how much I need to keep track of, but the, uh, the game seems to um, just keep progressing quite easily, there's, there's always something, a new entry to click on that unlocks further entries. Um, so it's not really a puzzle element, so far as I can see. So life support via central processing one. So a lot of what we're finding is revolving around Peter DeVore, um, who had something to do with discovering the portal, um, which caused the migration, I believe it was called, to happen, um, which does all seem to point towards uh, the ultimate fate of, of humankind. So let's have a look. Upload life support via central processing. Ref number 83778Y. EEG readout to Peter DeVore. Contact with Wanda Six Love. Sis Lurf. Okay. Uh, we, we, so we've met Wanda in some of the other text pieces we've seen um, in other categories before. Um, and sometimes she's been referred to as Wanda Sis Lurf, and sometimes as Wanda Six Love. Established through unknown psi effect. Check Psylink DB for references. Probability. Hypnagogic state sync through scion equation projection, parentheses Lawrence Fitzgerald, time, distortion apparently not present, 
despite near light speed of Vega 26 at time of contact. Run back note EEG readout indicative of high excitement while in deep sigma state. Such a combination of emotive consciousness states is highly unusual, if not unique. Central Processing AI Geneva, noted. End upload. Okay, and that's the end of that entry. That's sort of a, an oscilloscope image on that one. Okay, so that's all we need to read there. Oh, I accidentally clicked on Homer. It says, the golden thread binds all co consciousness. Homer, you're getting very abstract. Much more poetical as we as we go along. Okay, so um, I can go back to Homer because there, periodically there are always new things there, but my general policy is to work through all the categories and see if anything new has appeared. So let's start in the top left, as is my want, and have a look at Med 10. HMDS. Okay, Med10 Medical Database. So this is a disease uh, that affects another character, Jimmy Radix, who is a friend of Peter's, or was a friend of Peter's. Um, I don't believe they're still alive. So this is Holophage Memory Distortion Syndrome. Holophage Memory Distortion Syndrome, HMDS, is a disorder of the short-term memory system. The victim is essentially frozen in time, losing a temporal dimension altogether. Jimmy Radix remains 23 years old. Oh, oh, that's interesting. So this is speaking to me as if, this is a general entry, this is speaking to me as if it's just to me who knows who Jimmy Radix is. Interesting. Short-term memory span is less than five minutes, usually only around two minutes. Rhythmic and repetitive tasks are soothing biocycles. And that's it for that, that entry. Interesting that that's... Um, the entry seems to be skewed toward me as the reader, who's already um, interested in Jimmy Radix, the man with the hoe. Psylink. We seem to have been reading a lot about psychic phenomena, so this might be a good place to go. No, nothing new there. Okay. SciTech, all your sciencey needs. Oh. oh. Okay, yeah, I wondered what happened to the previous entries. So we've read all those, but we've got three new things. Oh, interesting. We've got a category about another cat, or a an entry about another category. That's what I mean. Edmod. So, yeah, it appears to be generally that um, we unlock little blocks of information, um, sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes presented kind of as non fiction or fiction, um, and those seem to unlock certain key phrases um, and events and characters um, that then become entries in themselves. So, this is general science and technology information. Current entry Edmod. Edmod. Crystalline matrix grown from individual DNA templates. Error rates run at less than one per trillion electron gates. Um, not, yeah, so uh, more stable than my bitrate, I'd say. Still, errors can be serious since the gate is critical to individual personality meld, particularly in adolescence. Edmond's responsible for the general and specific course of individual education, including appropriate training authorised entry to appropriate databases and specialised skills. Only central processing has access to individual Edmod codes, and only Intercorp Council Geneva node, Edmod AI, could propose and authorise alterations in the priority override codes. So, um, there's been some suggestion that, uh, ooh, looks a brain, um, that Peter was a uh, being monitored by Edmod, but was also doing some kind of illicit activities um, as, as kind of curiosity experiments. 
Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna meet myself to have a little coffee and a drink for a second. I'll be right back. Yeah, so if you'll notice, uh, the image of Homer is flashing in the the corner there. That means uh, it's got new um, got new information for us, new parts of the story probably. But we'll read this entry first. So this is communication. Communications network. WorldNet creates a seven-tiered distributed channel network. Nodes are located in major herbs, with subnodes in outlying geographical centers. Nodes exist also in the LP5s, lunar and Mars bases, and polar orbiters, as well as the standard array of geosyncs. Polar coverage is inadequate, yet no feasible solution is available. Oh, okay. So that that said. Yes, yeah, so there's poor communications with the poles, but uh, a, a seemingly important piece of information um, we've found out previously is that Antarctica seceded as its own its own nation, and seemed to be um, the one least under control of a global corporation, which seemed to have access to a uh, a, a private army that seemed to be doing quite a lot of uh, horrendous things to people. Um, so there's, there's that going on in the background. So this is BioCyberon. Um, Cybernon, sorry. Um, a corporation. Oh, it's a corporation. I thought it was going to be a person. I'd I'd worship BioCyberon, wouldn't you? A corporation founded in the late 1980s. Bio I imagine if a company called itself BioCyberon. That'd be amazing. Provided the first primitive hardware, software, wetware interfaces. Amazing. Later used in Mozart consoles, Edmod AI algos, meditation chambers, and the like. Later absorbed by First Intercorp after the AT&T IBM alliance in 1990. That gets me every time. Um, yeah, so Intercorp is the, the big bad corporation. Uh, data crystal failure. Hmm, I wonder how accurate this information is. Okay, so I think we'll call, we'll call up there. Let's click on uh, Homer and see what's... Come to Homer, I have a file ready for you. Okay, Homer. Oh, sorry, I don't mean to keep agitating you. Okay, so I think Homer's going to keep... Uh, going to keep um, making a, uh, a show until we, uh, until we come back. But there's probably going to be other bits and pieces to find out before we get there, I think. Some more history. If you want to know what happens in the years 2040 to 2049, um, if you um, if you're interested in seeing what we found out about um, our current past um, and our immediate future, uh, then check out some of the uh, the vods of our previous streams on on my YouTube channel because uh, we go through all those there. It's it's quite a wild ride. So let's see what happens in 2040 to 2049, shall we? Okay, 2040 to 41, Soviet Union post-industrial Marxism. Okay, um, but at the time, at the time the game was made, the Soviet Union was still a thing. Uh, genetic drift syndrome reaches epidemic level. Moscow declared continental historic park. Okay, 2042 to 43, all natural bacteriological and viral diseases eradicated. Yes. All cancers except genetic, curable. Yes. Taylor's helper murders human. Oh, no, no, that's not good. Um, what about uh, Asimov's laws of robotics? Second Vega starship. Ships leave on regular basis. Jolly good. Taylor's helper pogrom begins. Oh, so anything, anything called a pogrom. No, no. Uh, November 2043. Oh, so uh, previously these uh, have only been introduced um, in elliptical fashion like this. Um, they seem to be some kind of artificial life form that were created, given rights, uh, and now a, a genocide appears to be happening. So 2044 to 45, global birth rate begins to decline. Neurophage weapons used, Burmese War, November 2044. 
ENC quells TH pogrom. Viral genetic disease plague. Tailored helpers wild virus plague begins August 2045. Um, 2046 to 47. Dolphins reject human contact. That's perfect. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, the We established dolphin uh, communication uh, several years previously, if you're interested. Homer grown in Geneva. Home grown in Geneva. Uh, so home has been around since 2046, and the year, current year, is in my notes somewhere. It was on the... Uh, I'll go check so I can let you know. Uh, current year is... Uh, to where, yeah, we're in Chicago, 1st of June, 2106. That's where we are. When and where and, and everything else. Okay, so what else happens here? Uh, genetic disease taxonomy established. TH plague destroys last entity. Okay, so we perhaps allow them to be wiped out by a disease instead. Okay. 2048 to 49, genetic disease increases. Uh, well, this sounds like all the humans died. World population 10 billion and dropping. Mm. Personal neurophage weapons legalized. Personal Violence Act makes a cult of martial arts. So we've touched on some of those things as well in other entries. Um, dueling, sort of organized dueling between consenting adults is a thing. Um, to kind of prevent uh, wider wider disputes and greater violence. Um, not a fan of that. Um, neural weapons, so they cause neural disruption um, and leave people incapacitated. It's um, it's a sorry things are in a sorry state um, long before we get back here. So apologies if you were hoping for a, a cheery story. For this stream, it's, uh, it's I think it's going to be a bit of a down on this one. Okay, nothing in the military. Life support. So this is one of the categories where we can find out about the characters that uh, have been unlocked for us. They never really get m marked off, and I believe we've already looked at Jimmy Radix. So there's nobody new who's uh, appeared. Kind of hoping there won't be too many characters to keep track of because uh, it could get a bit unwieldy after a while. Are you hearing the uh, the audio from the game? Is it? I don't, I don't know if it's coming through, which is odd and interesting. Um, so there's nothing there. Oh yeah, it's good. I think it was just for me that it wasn't coming on. Um, right. So I think the only thing. So life support, Wasatch, psychology, and Edmod all relate to the same cast of characters. Um, so there shouldn't be anything new in any of those. We'll just check central processing and then we'll we'll go see what Homer has to say. Nothing there. Okay. So I think probably this phase of the story is gonna turn more towards Peter's relationship with Wanda. Um, but the nature of that I don't really know. Wanda seemed to be heading to a a Vega colony. Um in um some kind of uh, suspension. Okay, we've got two entries. We've got one from chapter one. Let's read that first. I replay the records. I watch what they did. Regent Sable talked to Peter's father via a rare direct fibre hollow link, a secure line. Ran was not particularly happy with the call. It's dear Christmas, he said. Got work to do, what do you want? How see me? Regent asked, and Ran, as always, was uncertain whether the question was intended to be provocative and ironic, or was a sincere expression of goodwill. He chose not to be surly, though that was his inclination. She's fine, Regent, just fine. And the boy? Regent went on. How do you find the boy these days? Ran hesitated. 
I'm not sure what you mean. He's all right. You can see that Rand was not telling the whole truth. You can see that, can't you? Talking to me, Homer. No deviations, no peculiarities, departures from the Edmont tutorial programs? Does, does he seem overly secretive, perhaps? You know the sort of thing. What do you want from me? Ran asked belligerently. He was losing his detachment. He realised that immediately. He'd need an extra session in the chamber tonight. But damn it all, Regent Sable was such a sanctimonious ass. Just be a good father to the boy, Ran, that's all. Regent's voice poured oil on the troubled water. It bothered Ran that Regent called Peter the boy all the time. He had considered Regent might be Peter's father, but for some reason he'd never bothered to have the tests done. It didn't seem important then. Now, though, with the call, he wasn't so sure. Perhaps it was important. Perhaps there were things about Peter he didn't understand. He'd have to talk to see me about it soon. He changed his Edmod crystal for some particle flaws. He's fine now. Ran shifted uncomfortably under Regent's gaze. We're not so sure, Ran. Back here in Geneva, things look a little different. For example, he's been spending time somewhere out of contact. Did you know that? What? Oh, you mean topside? Yeah. He hangs around with a pathetic vet named Radix. HMDS victim. He's harmless, really. Jazz Regent. The man does gardening. Oh, I've got to use jazz and exclamation in real life. Oh. No, Ram, that's not what we're concerned about. We've been monitoring the park. It's something else. We don't know where he goes, but he's taking time off. He's in the formative era of his career prep, Ram. We wouldn't want him to go wrong now, would we? And I have a special interest in the boy, so keep an eye on him. See if you can find out where he's going. Sure. Okay, Regent. I'll watch out for him. After he broke the connection, he wondered how much he really intended to do as he'd just promised. I can see all this that went on inside him. Ooh, that's a bit creepy, Homer. Okay, so as you might have uh, been able to infer from that, is Ran is Peter's father, and Regent Sable is someone in authority who uh, could be Peter's biological father. It is sunrise across the plain. The river catches the violet light and strings it through the winding pattern of its flow. Deep Illinois green. Forests beyond the river. Small temporary villages strangely solid in the dawn. She watches from her high tower, the Princess Ariane of the white gown and slender neck. Watches for the thread of dust that bespeaks her valorous knight riding toward her. As the day grows bright and hot, and he fails to come. She sighs and turns away to her tapestry, where the unicorn at bay pours his hooves at the encircling hounds. She throws, she threads the golden wire through the horn in a helix to the point, and the horn glows in the heavy noontime light, also golden. The unicorn's eye is wild with fear and rage to be so trapped. Behind her, the door opens at last, he kneels at her feet. Milady, he says. He bows his head and she touches his hair lightly, the straight brown hair that hangs shoulder length. He holds his plumed and polished helm in his right hand, her own hand in his left. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm resisting the urge to innuendo there. I hope you'll think me brave. Um, let's return to home and see if anything else popped up as a crike with three pages deep now. Okay, so that was interesting. So Peter had mentioned having something like a lucid dream into which Wanda entered, and it was framed somewhat in the manner of a knight and a princess. So that could be what that related to. Um, I guess we do, we just do the run again, don't we? Okay, we'll do the run one more time. See what new stuff there is out there.
Nothing here. Silink. Imo can break us in. Hypnagogics, obviously. Hypnagogics developed from early definition of state leading to sleep as form of lucid dreaming. Techniques developed and disseminated by William Gulaley, Australian Aborigine from Dreamtime Mythos. Um, yeah, so the this this uh, this story written by uh, I assume uh, a white American in the mid eighties does have some uh, outdated terminology. Let's say uh, relaxed state of consciousness susceptible to external influence. Possible state for telepathic contact, not proven. Hypnagogics comprise the dream state between waking and sleeping, characterised by vivid imagery and abrupt insight. For decades, hypnagogic state was considered a useless human phenomenon, since little memory trace remained of such imagery and insight. With the development of the Cyan equations, some control was gained, but Intercourt Council declared hypnagogic research, except for medical purposes, proscribed. For technical information, see Ref 127426 at 182 stroke 9. So that might unleash a few bits and bobs elsewhere. Anything in history? Unres 1992 Unres 1992 Underground Charter So this is in reference to Peter DeVore, so we're kind of we're getting the system to throw us things that um, are flagged up through this reference number. Uh, it's a UN resolution, 1992. The original UN resolution of 1992 to move underground had gained uneven acceptance throughout the world. Antarctica, for example, the movement underground was nearly universal. Elsewhere, though, only some cities were successfully dug. Cheap laser drilling power and robot heavy construction made such a move plausible and affordable. For many cultural and social reasons existed to prevent its universal adoption. Large sections of Chicago, much of Boston, Washington DC and Seattle remained topside. Other cities like San Francisco could not go underground without severe geological problems. Still others like Moscow and New York remained frozen in time, preserved as historic monuments, while cities like Singapore and Brasilia became heavy industry centres. Finally, some, like Calcutta, Kolkata, were successfully moved underground. Among the most successful moves in America were the Springfields. Part of this resulted from agricultural pressure, since in the teens and twenties the land was needed for intensive farming. By the mid-21st century, this was no longer a necessity. Partly it was the even and controlled environment underground that made the move attractive. Interesting. If you say so, if you say so. So that is all of history. I mean, it's not all of history, but it's uh, it's all we've got access to at the moment. Imagine if it just um, spout irrelevant things from the I don't know, like the War of the Roses or something. A mist. Missed the point entirely. No new characters? Okay. Any geography? Got a feeling there's going to be something in central processing for us. 
Springfield West. Should we see if we've got a picture of a... Uh, oh, Geographic Database, Springfield West. Geograph, 2075, stroke NWA, stroke 66, as per date requested. There you go, there's Springfield West, there's Cotier. Cotier. Um, I don't know how you pronounce that, I don't know if that's a place that exists in the real world. Okay. Oh, that was a little bit of side information, I think. Okay, central processing. I have confidence in in something being here. Yeah, telemetry, life support, agent probe. Oh, wouldn't you hate to be called agent probe? Okay. So this is central processing. Ref number 43947 stroke WS stroke PD stroke code 9. Who are you? she asked. And where am I? He looked up. For a moment, she was not high, uh, not a lady in the white gown, caught in the high tower, but a cold corpse surrounded by void, beseeching in a ghost voice. He nearly dropped her hand. It was so cold and dead. Classified. Now you see, something's gone a bit awry there, hasn't it? Because that's... That's interesting. Okay, life support by central processing 2. Devor Peter. Indicators show increased tension, lowered blood pressure and temperature. Such indicators are unique. Increased tension with lowered BP suggests discrete altered state of consciousness, parentheses, asterisk, D-A-S-C, while in hypnagogic state, state sync or trance communion. Silent notified, Intercorp Council notified, Elite Neutralization Corps, Prescribed Technologies Division notified, Central Processing AI Geneva noted, end upload. Well, that sounds ominous. Uh, here's some of that. So we, um, when we look at people's profiles and the other categories that we haven't really looked at today, um, we just get these um, these graphs. Uh, so everybody is kind of represented statistically, um, numerically, which is an interesting contrast to the uh, uh, the pros that we get elsewhere. So agent probe. Okay, oh, what's this map? Okay, Springfield West. So north of Springfield West, there's a Warren and Decatur. All home slashing again. Central processing, ref number 2347614. Code 7, invest probe SW. Our agent probe arrived at Springfield Warren. Extensive damage to tunnels, extreme weathering. Major life support shutdown on matrix failures, soil subsidence, geologic deformation, and small animal destruction reported. Okay, so there are animals around? Search initiated for lower level Warren chambers, with evidence of extended unwanted use. So I think this is something that's supposed to be happening right now in real time, is that the um, systems that are still functioning around the world are looking for extra information for us as to, to the state of state of uh, structures, basically. Um, so that's interesting. Come to Homer. Come to Homer. Yeah. Okay. I was ready to do that anyway, Homer. Okay, another little nugget from chapter one. Since the Springfields were among the earliest cities to dig, much of the Warren complex later became obsolete, abandoned and eventually forgotten. Jimmy Radix, perhaps because he had such good memories from his youth, had found a subcellar library and laboratory complex, which was sealed off in the mid-30s. 
The entire area was also under a personal encrypt, which made our rediscovery of it difficult. Okay, so it's leaving off the uh, the Warren's information that we found, and then just checking in here. The next little chunk of chapter two. My lord, she said. She said. She is haughty and proud in tone, yet tender in her touch. There is a terror in the land, she says to him, and he feels a surge of pride that she has chosen to tell him this. Yes, my lady, he says, standing and striding to the narrow window to look out on the land, so fair and peaceful beneath the sun. A terror there is. He turns back to her, reaching but not touching her. He speaks, not looking at her, but down as befits his station. I may slay the dragon, he says, his hand on the hilt of his broadsword. Or, yes, or we may lead the people away to a new land beyond the mountains, to undreamed freedom. No one, she says then, has been beyond the mountains. Mm. All very symbolic, I'm sure. Uh, what mountains? What metaphors? All right. Okay. So, um, last time we streamed, the uh, entries seemed to come thick and fast, really. Um, but we have to hunt around for them a bit more at the moment, which is okay. But the the um, the clicking around for things loop, um, I think it's going to get a bit tiresome if it goes on. For very long. Luckily we're here to keep each other company. Okay, let's see if there's anything in Silink. Nope. It's um interesting that it's, it's quite hard to gauge how far we are through the narrative, like, oh, personal encrypts. I'd say probably maybe halfway, if I had to guess, because um, we seem to have unlocked very little um, plot progress. I expect there will be more comes out in the way of plot, um, um, rather than, I don't think it's going to be this kind of fractured um, series of impressions only. I think we will, a plot will, will make itself known. So, personal encrypts. Based on a specific segment of the individual's chromosomal DNA, personal encrypts could be neither faked nor could they be broken, except of course by central processing, which has access to all genotype coding. Individuals using personal encrypt could lock personal files, life support, EDMOD and certain proprietary data crystals. Such encrypted crystals could not be accessed by anyone else. Randax, random access, would ignore all such encrypted data. Randax is a great fantasy name. A wizard Randax. Excellent. Okay, so that was all that was there. Um, nothing in SciTech. Maybe a smattering of history? Um, no, no such thing. Military? Geography.
Quebec Warrens. Well, I think one of the characters was from Quebec. I think that's that rings a bell. Um, so this is as per date requested. So we requested a map of so Lake Quo. I think that says spaceport over there, lovely. And that's Quebec Warrens. That's the scale. <laughs> um, yeah, great. Thank you. So that itself isn't enough to trigger Homer. I'll just show you quickly the um, the character thing. This is nobody new there, but so Wanda, who I think we're going to be focusing on soon. We get ah, so Wanda's from Montreal. So that that's Canada, isn't it? So there may be some some trigger there somewhere. So this is the kind of information that we get from people, but um, even for someone, so this has a birth date for Wanda, but um, no date of death. So in theory, she's still around somewhere, but I don't know if these things actually change, whether they're supposed to be live or were just taken at one point in time. But that's, that's what's there. Um, and different categories are shown in each of the uh, the sections that deal with people individually. So central processing, I imagine there's something else there as well. Let's have a look. To all more telemetry, that's uh, probably going to be uh, about knights and princesses, isn't it? Peter. He said, thinking it was him. It was to himself. My name is Peter Devore. I am not a princess, she said. Not Ariane of the white gown. I am. I am Wanda. Wanda Sislav, from the city of Quebec, Northwest Alliance. I am. Oh, I thought I had grown used to this. She wailed in despair, and Peter tried to touch her to uncover her tangible reality. There was nothing, though. His mind hand slipped through hers as through a thought. Yet she was beautiful, white of skin and pale gold of hair, bound in braids above her smooth brow. He was haunted by the sadness in her face. Does she remind you of anyone? Edmod asked him the next day. Peter frowned. Remind me? Oh, you me, my mother? Does she look like see me or act like her? I don't believe so. She doesn't feel like a reconstruction of my unconscious wishes. Edmod detected no irony in Peter's voice, but stress analysis of the sonograms showed he intended it. He was curious, of course, and excited too. After all, Wanda Sixlove was a full-fleshed woman with a high erotic index. And, sorry, this is becoming a bit too much of a too runny sketch, but I'll, I'll carry on, I'll carry on. An object of Peter's own sexual fantasy. So he returned to her night after night, though he still didn't know whether she was a real person or a projection, nor where she was. But he began making discreet inquiries of the Quebec Warren population roles. He guessed her age to be mid-twenties, but Quebec, of course, had no record of anyone of that age or name from the appropriate dates. So he went back. Went back to where? Oh, Homer. I mean, we had a record of of oh, we do have more stuff. Of uh, Wanda in history, um, and the the personal. Um, Statistics. He speaks, it seems, across a gulf to her. He's trapped, stripped and bound, while his captors laugh, piling brush around his feet. Tendrils of smoke twist before his face, and the first heat licks at his ankles. He's staked in a thicket, where the sticks are dry and the leaves are dead. Weakness seizes his knees and they bend, 
though he cannot fall, bound as he is. Milady! She answers from the great distance to her castle. What is it? She asks, and her voice is irritable and abrupt. He was in the mountains, seeking the high passes to beyond, when he was captured by these faceless knights in dark armour. What is it? She asks a second time. Save me! He begs her. Save me! She stands above her tank, looking down at herself, frozen. Whom should I save? Who am I? Who am locked away here? She asks, looking at herself. She had grown used to looking at herself, surrounded by mirrors that told her always how to move. Sir Peter, he he said, or thought he said, and she replied. I know no one of that name, Sir Peter. No one. She saw the great plain, with the river winding through the forests and the far mountains beyond. Highly metaphorical, I think. Um, so, right. I guess we'll we'll do the do the dance again in a minute. I'll just um, break for a second to have another sip of water, and then I'll I'll start back at med tip. Okay. No. This is um this is definitely an intriguing way of presenting a novel and very appropriate to the, the um the novel that this is. Um but I don't know that it's um with uh, duration, I don't know that it is a helpful way. I feel like um I mean so the certainly on the platforms this was developed for things like hyperlinks weren't really a possibility I think they could have been on the, the Mac at this time um, just about uh, but I think that sort of cross-reference ability um, could have made this a lot more of an organic experience rather than a kind of a, a round of checking and rechecking the same uh, locations for for the new things that are unlocked. Um, not a lot has unlocked by the looks of it. No, it's the same, same cast of characters. Geography again? Is that where we went back to? To find out more? No. Well, uh, the central processing then, I guess. Oh yeah, here we are. Uh, life support via central processing three. Six love. Parentheses is love. Wonder. Telemetry. FR from Vega 26. Subject is passenger in cryofield hibernation. Arrived Geneva Telemetry Stories 26 August 2093, 1428 Zulu time. Little life support telemetry arrives in from the Vega starships. Start ships. Flagged immediate attention since no need was seen for such information as it is at this time over 19 years out of date. Right? Okay, so yeah, so this is, that was a fairly recent arrival then, because we're only just into the tw 2100s, right? Um, events portrayed are historical. 
Note the subject has been in close psychic sync with Peter DeVore. At this time, we note decreased sigma with a concurrent increase in first alpha, then delta states. Wonder 6 Love has fallen asleep. Central processing error Geneva noted. End upload. So... That appears to be current information. Wanda's asleep. Okay. Another time she felt breezes blowing past her redolent. Her redolent with the aromas of onions or pine or tasted strawberries. Felt the colour of stars splash through tears of laughter. Felt cool glass under her fingertips. Perhaps she drank again. From something in a glass or cup, and the colour strained, leaving the scent of orange rind. Darkness swam through her belly. Mm -hmm. Low support by central processing 4. Peter DeVore in hypnagogic sync with Wanda Six Love. Parentheses, Vega 26 telemetry. That the subject has been in close psychic sync with Wanda Six Love for several minutes. Okay, it's going on right now. Here we note decreased sigma with a concurrent increase in first alpha, then delta. Oh no, it's not going to be they told us this historic information. 19 years out of date. Then delta states, Peter DeVore has fallen asleep. Yeah, so I think this is historic from 19 years ago. From what it said. So that's the, um, yeah, I think as I've noticed before, that's kind of the way of this game from avoiding us trying to directly contact a character and have that kind of conversation in the face um, is that the only information we can find is, is historical. Yeah, it's the only context we can build. Okay, just check for any new bits in the past. No, we might have finished chapter one now then. Okay, chapter two. Hello, he said. Where are you? She asked. Springfield West. I'm in Springfield West. The Warren's under the park. Where are you? I don't know, she said. I really don't. You seem so real. I am real, Peter said. I am, I'm real. I live in Springfield West, in Old Illinois. You seem so far away. Are you far away? Vega, she said. Vega 26. Does that mean anything? A starship, he breathed. You're on a starship. When did it leave? 2050, she said. In the summer, I left from Alice Springs. It was winter there, of course, in Australia. But I don't remember much. How is it we can talk like this? I must be imagining it. You're in hibernation, Peter said. It's the hypnagogics. The what? Hypnagogics. That kind of twilight state between waking and sleeping. There's been lots of stuff come out the past few years, lots of research. Of course the really good stuff is prescribed, kids can't get that information. But we get some training in the biopsych chambers, and I'm working on some new stuff myself. Hypnagogics, she said slowly. Yes, I remember. I slept a lot those last few years. It was the only way I could tolerate my condition. What year is it? 2074. You've been gone for 24 years already. I can find out where you are, but I'll, I'll figure it out later. Listen, this is important. We've got to keep doing this. Peter sensed a smile. He could feel her understanding, her amusement, her compassion for him. You're young, she said. I can tell. You must be 14 or so. 15? Almost 16? I'm 50 now. No, you're the age you were when you left, 24. You won't be any older than that, not much anyway. But that's not important. The important thing is that I'm working on these equations. He tried imagining the math for her, but he could feel her shrugging mentally. Never mind, you have to believe me. It's important that we keep doing this. A wind blew, not fast, but deeply cold, like static between them, like the hydrogen hiss of the whole universe at once. Yes, Peter, she said finally. It's important to me too. He was getting sleepy and could feel his control slipping away. No, he said, struggling to hold on. 
so alone, she said. And now I'm almost awake. Or I'm frozen solid and I can't move. I can't scream, cry, and I'm alone. I need you now, Peter. She faded away. The last he heard was, You must come back, Peter. Come back. Okay, that's a bit of progress. Bit of uh, context, bit of relationship. And another section of dialogue. Interesting. So these, the first initials in these references here. So that was probably one to six love, wasn't it? And then this is PD. So this could be Peter Devore related. Given enough power, Peter said, we could break through. He laughed. There's only one problem. There were 17 people in the room. Friends of Peter's like Rover and Shem, Winders and Shelley and Scotty and Jimmy Radix. Finally, there was Rover's current companion, an Asian girl with a keratin adaptation that gave her otter fur instead of hair. She was the one who finally asked, What's the one problem, Peter? The problem, Laren, is that it seems it would take the entire energy output of the sun for several days, concentrated to a few hundred milliseconds. Unfortunately, such power is not available locally. This remark was greeted by a smattering of laughter. You do know that what you're suggesting is probably not going to be appreciated by Intercorp. This was the girl with Otterfer. My father's ENC, you know. Your father's a cop? Shem asked. Well, not really. He's a system surrogate. Someone has to keep the simulations honest. You don't have to defend him, Shem told her. He can't help it. Besides, we're not doing anything illegal unless there's a law against thinking. No, she said shortly. That's not it. The elite neutralization corps watches out for dangerous new technologies, though. I hear about this stuff at home, you know. My father talks at dinner sometimes about things he overhears when he's on the system. Look, Rover said. I think Rover had an accent. Look, Rover said. There's nothing here. We don't have a new technology, and even if we did, we'd need a power source that doesn't exist, so they don't have to worry, right? Nonetheless, Peter said, I think I'll encrypt these meetings. No sense alarming the ENC over nothing. He gestured at the slowly rotating hollow shape in the air beside him. This model, this model represents a configuration of the particle flow in a quantum transformation. On the macro level, it represents a hypnagogic state. I've been having some experience with this lately, and this is the best model I've been able to devise. It is consistent with the Cyan equations as far as I can tell. The Northwestern University Cruncher has run all the math for me, and it's probable to 12 places. Of course, because the effect is quantum, nothing is certain. There was not another laugh at this joke. They're a very receptive crowd, I'll give them that. Nothing is certain, someone repeated. Heisenberg be praised. They drank the uncertainty principle with their milk in the nursery. The only really dangerous part for us, as far as ink is concerned, is that Silink is a prescribed database and I found it necessary to let you two, uh, enter it. The model is really a four-dimensional transform. Well, um, I hope we get a few more rib ticklers like those. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, it's a wonder reference. Okay. I'm cutting on to you, game. Guided narrative thing. I don't know what's making this work so well, Peter told Wonder Six Love. But I'm finding it easier and easier to reach and stay with you. I'm making a connection, she said. And there was such intense passion and promise in her feeling tone that Peter would have blushed had he been awake. She danced for him, reaching to take his hand to lead him into the slow purvein. Behind them, the walls were hung with tapestries she had woven through the long, weary years of her voyage in the cold, tapestries in which the unicorn turned at bay and the damsel was seated on the forest floor with the noble head in her lap and the hunters called in the distance as the dogs came close. Overhead, the leaves hung down, close and dense, holding them as they walked slowly, hands together and arched, looking into one another's eyes. 
Wanda's eyes were violet, he thought, of a twilight clarity. Is this love? he wondered, thinking she was ten years his senior, and although wiser in the world. And although wiser in the world? And altogether wiser in the world. But no, she said to him, I am frozen in time as I hurtle through space, while you grow. Soon you will be the older. By the time I arrive at Beta, you will be the older. Oh, weaving girl, Peter said, with such despair. They danced. Okay, uh, impossible, uh, impossible love? Okay. Interesting place to leave me hanging. Um, let's go a little bit out of order this time. Let's go central processing first, because that seems to be our, our richest source of information currently, with all the telemetry coming in. No, not this time. How about Meten? Gad. Gad. Genetic disease. Oh, genetic abulia disorder. That has been mentioned before. Due to crystal failure again. Abulia disorder. Parentheses. Gad. Is a malignant form of new non standard neurophage weapon effects. Such non standard weapons developed during the Mind Wars. Gad resulted in the victim's complete loss of will. Physiological systems declined steadily despite heroic life support measures. Excuse me. Heroic life support measures and systematic treatment. Gad victims eventually died of starvation as if they had pulled the plug on themselves. Causes poorly understood. Not nice. Um, oh, proprioceptive degeneration. I think I had to pronounce that before as well. Um, I did, didn't enjoy it then. Uh, proprioceptive degeneration disease. Uh, PDD. Characterized by waning and eventual loss of the proprioceptive sense, which locates the human body and limbs in space. Um, I mean, general, I suppose space in the general sense rather than you know outer space. Victims are unable to locate themselves and must live in houses filled with mirrors to provide constant oh visual feedback to ordinary activities. So that's probably what Wanda is experiencing by the sounds of it from context. Cause of the disease is unknown, though it is grouped in the standard taxonomy of genetic diseases, first described in the mid 20th century. The disease appeared in large numbers beginning in the 2020s and reached a proportion reaching 1,000 new cases a year worldwide. The effects are irre irreversible. Chromosome 11 contains the genetic mark of the disease, but the exact location of the affected gene or genes seems to move at random. Theoretical treatment was through extended hibernation in the Vega Starship cryofields, which accounted for the high percentage of victims among the passengers. Effectiveness of this treatment is unknown. Okay, so it was partly a course of treatment to uh, to be transported. Interesting. Okay. Well, I can feel my throat getting a little bit tight, and I am nearly out of water. So I'm just going to take a, a break for a minute or two, um, and we'll we'll be back. We'll be back on it. We'll have a look at the rest of the categories and. Uh, See where that gets us. Hello everyone, I'm back. I definitely feel um, the, the the amount of reading, reading there is in this game does definitely does take its toll on my my throat. We um, we'll go for another half now. I think that should be fine. I'll um, stop our music in the background. There. I'll just pause a sec to say hello to anybody who's in chat. Yeah, I can see a few people in there. Hello, you're welcome. Um, if you'd like to pop in the chat and say hello, that would that would be awesome. You're very welcome to. Um, let me know what you think of 
the game and everything. Um, and we will we'll carry on. Uh, we are here. There we are, lovely. Oh, you can see my uh, my BRB is showing up now. Uh, in very large text, so that's nice. Um, let's get back in that. Oh, didn't mean to click on that, but got me back in the window. So that's nice. Um, no new characters. Well, that's something we need to find out anyway, wasn't it? So let's go sight link. I think we'll we'll carry on in the usual formation until we get back to Homer again. Into my DNA code override. Nothing there. Cytec. Holo modeling. You know, I, I did think of taking up holo, holo modeling as an occupation. Peter's model. Flat screen holo model of Devor. Peter. Oh. Data crystal failure. So I'm not sure what that's supposed to represent. So there was a holo model of of Peter, but it's not something we can see or appreciate. Okay. History. Who'd like to know what happens between 2050 and 2059? And we've still got like another 40 years of history after that, but for up to the present day, which I assume will will appear at some point. So 2050 to 2051, Vega 26 launched. Well, that's relevant. Wonder 6 Love is 24 years old. First effects of Neurophage, parentheses Burma War. September 2051, Mass Neophage Weapons Banned, December 14th, 2051. 2052 to 53, Psyche Facility in Baja attacked by New Poverty Soldiers. That's in uh, quotation marks. Baja Facility Destroyed, Regent Sable Involved. Oh. Interesting. Uh, so who who are you who are you acting on behalf of Agent Regent Sable? Twenty fifty four. Jimmy Radix contracts holophage memory distortion syndrome. Psyche moved to Mount Erebus in Antarctica. I think we yeah we'd had read about Psyche before, didn't we? The psychic research. Um, Twenty fifty six to fifty seven. Regent Sable joins Intercorp Council. Okay. Crystal virus causes crisis in world economy. Oh goodness, if there was a, uh, a virus that was attacking their organic crystal storage system, then that, that would be a problem. 2058 to 59, Peter DeVore born, March 15th, 2059. NP weapons lead to mind war technology, e.g. shields developed. Mm. Sounding pretty dire, isn't it? Okay, so that's got us back up on that. Um, any military stuff related to the um, the neutralization core? The encouragingly named elite neutralization core? No. Okay. Geography. Oh, okay, more places. Springfield Warrens. This is where Peter lived. Um, and, oh, this is a map. Yeah, a uh, map. I think we s we've already seen that, haven't we? So I'm not sure what that is supposed to bring to us really. Uh, Springfield weather, Northwest Alliance. What was the weather like? Is that as of now or as of 
Geographic database text information, Springfield Weather, Northwest Alliance. November 23, 2075. Like, well, that was like a quarter century ago. Light snow, weather monitor node AI allowed 7 centimeters per hour accumulation for the following 24 hours. Temperature low 4 degrees Celsius, high 9 degrees Celsius. That was, yeah, that's fairly cold. Wind south southwest at 7 kilometers per hour. It's, um, it's the future, so everybody uses metric. Um, sure, yeah, some ISO arts. Yeah, good. Okay, so that's kind of apropos of nothing, isn't it? But who knows? Who knows what that could, could unlock inside us? Um, uh, there was nothing in the people. So central processing we'd already been to, hadn't we? Unless... Um, any of that uh, cascade into something else? Didn't seem to. Well, Homer then. Homer. What? What's to do, Homer? Okay, a couple of uh, a couple of Peter Devore chunks that we hadn't uh, hadn't found before. Okay. Okay, here we go. Still, Peter and his group may have continued undisturbed had not Simi fallen victim to the mind wars. Oh no. The fighting in Chicago had grown fierce and was spreading south. She was caught in the crossfire while attending a music symposium at the University of Chicago Warren. Peter and Ran sat by her bed in the Springfield Hospice. She had full life support, but it meant nothing. They may as well have been watching a recording, a reconstruction. The monitors registered life maintenance, nothing more. She's gone, Peter, Ran said softly. He laid his hands on Peter's shoulder. I know, Dad. Peter watched his mother's chest rise and fall, forced by the monitors to continue breathing. He looked for the little signs that would indicate there was a personality there, a flutter of the eyelids, movement of the eye under the lid, small changes of expression, the nervous twitch of a finger. We haven't learned much, have we? Ran sighed. I guess not. She was working on a new piece. She had that look just last week. Something new was going to come of it. Now it won't. The wall opposite displayed sunset across the park the trees on the horizon gathering into shadow as the light slipped behind them. Nearby, the creek flowed toward a cattle pond, where some people skated in winter. A light breeze disturbed the surface of the water, turning it rough and dark. No, Rand said at last. Now it won't. They sat in silence as the darkness gathered outside. Figuratively and literally. Okay, next bit. You're gonna lose us, Peter. Most of us are heavy in body kinesthetic and spatial IQ. Lawrence and pattern recognition, organization and visual cognition. Shem does mostly music. You're the math person. Keep it simple. Peter shrugged. He pushed the model gently, and it floated away, turning slowly. It was a complex three-dimensional structure that changed as it turned, lines and planes intersecting, flowing into one another, behind one another, through one another, while changing colour. Cones formed, flattened, became spheres, turned at right angles to become complex knots made of silver coils. The model stopped over the projector and froze. Okay, he said. The model represents what happens when two people make a psychic link in a hypnagogic state. This is a real phenomenon which I have experienced with a rider on the Vega 26 starship. You're dreaming, Robert said after a silence. Peter nodded. Yes, he said. That's exactly. Still, it's real. 
I've checked the records. Her name is Wanda Sixlove, and her ship left in 2050, nine years before I was born. I learned all this through my contact with her, and then checked it out. There is no way I could have had that information before, yet the comps confirmed everything. She told me she had proprioceptive degeneration disease, and that the medics thought 30 years in the freezer might cure it, so she went on a Vega flight. I knew a PDD, one of the men said. I never heard of that cure. Maybe it doesn't work. There haven't been any revivers yet. But a lot of PDDs went on one ship, and she has a special skill because of it. What's PDD? The girl with Otterfer wanted to know. It's a loss of all spatial sense. All the proprioceptive sensors in joints and muscles go offline. They have to live in houses made out of mirrors for visual feedback. I wouldn't want it. The old timer leaned back and crossed his arms, looking at Jimmy. Old, who's the old timer? Um, that's confusing. I'm not sure who was talking there. Was it Peter or was it uh, what's his name? Rover, the dog. You wouldn't want what I got either, Jimmy said. Oh, bless Jimmy. No, you're sure right there, my friend. I would not. So who, who was that then? I don't know. So, Robert said, returning to the subject, what's her special skill? She's used to being adrift in space, Peter replied. It doesn't frighten her to be cut off from her body. Frankly, it scares the code right out of me. The code? So what, nobody's going to be leaving their body, Shem said. On the contrary, Jimmy Radix said, that's precisely what we could all do. Uh, I, yeah, I thought they, we might have migrated away from our bodies. Except for that one little problem, Laren said. Right, power supply, Shelley concluded. Well, let's all think about it. Look, people used to think that certain tasks took enormous power, lifting cars above the ground, for instance. Now liquid nitrogen vehicles use very little energy. It could be the same with this thing. Oh, this was Rover. Rover suggested. Peter began encrypting the recordings of the meeting. Remember, he said, pausing, with enough power we could break through. There's another world. We've got enough trouble in this one, I think, the Otto girl said, but she was grinning when she said it. Okay. Okay, well that kind of clarifies what the intention is and where... People may have migrated too. So we've unlocked a previous entry. Interesting, back in chapter one. Regent Sable came again to Springfield West. Now he had company, men with hard eyes. He was angry. He noted his anger. He was angry because he was afraid. Something had slipped past the monitors, past all the regulation the careful social control, and having slipped past, it was about to escape, and at a time when such escape would have the worst effects on the world. Population was declining at an alarming rate. The mind wars were raging out of control on three continents. Human productivity was falling. But the one worry that overshadowed all the others was Peter Devore. Regent was reasonably certain by then that Peter was his son, Yet it was even more clear that Peter was a danger, that his particular genius was taking him into areas that would better be left alone, for a number of significant reasons. It was a genius Peter got from his mother, a woman who had been growing increasingly dangerous herself, her art tending as it had toward prescribed technologies. Peter's grandmother, Astora, had a significant level of psychic functioning, though it, as always it was a useless ability. But it appeared that Peter was about to find a way to apply the ability. Furthermore, Central Processing predicted, with over 73% confidence, that almost everyone had the ability. If it were developed, the relatively stable and peaceful structure of world society would be torn apart. Despite the mind wars, the world remained clean, safe and well provided. Without poverty, debilitating illness outside the genetic diseases, or oppression. 
longevity technology was freely available, and barring genetic disease, a human could expect to live to at least 114. But a widespread psychic technology would upset all that. Results were unpredictable, but CP had 87% confidence that consequences would be negative. So far, Regent has been able to prevent any significant growth of this technology. He'd helped destroy Psyche back in 52, and as far as he knew, that was the end of it. Now it seemed that Mentor, Ditmore Seminole Gad himself, had contacted Peter through channels as yet untraced, and had pushed him into making some fundamental discoveries, and worse, disseminating the information. All in all, things were not going well just now. Regent did not intend to let them remain that way. Okay. Well, so things are starting to tie up a little bit more, which is quite satisfying. Um, we're out of our narrative chunks. So we've got to go, go fishing for tidbits, for factoids. And have a little slurp of water while. Okay, I'm unmuting for this. We, we're going to look at funeral practices now, apparently. I guess that's related to Peter's mother see me. That would be my guess. Funeral practices. By the late 2020s, a combination of ecological and social forces, parentheses, EQ society was a prime mover in this trend, it resulted in cremation and recycling as standard funeral practice. I mean, I think they kind of are, aren't they? Um, in the real world? I guess it's regional, isn't it? Um, even minor warrens had mortuary facilities for the swift reduction and capture of components. The recycled materials are not, in truth, necessary to the well-being of intercorp society. The strong belief system prevails that provides relief from grief reactions by assuring the continued flow of the material body in the universal dynamic. Wow, I hope you put that in the brochure. Crikey. Okay, that's that's all of that. Right? History. Nothing new in the history. Military. Nothing. Geography. Another little napkin sketch of the road to somewhere? No, not this time. Central P. Oh, hang on, let's check the people categories. No. Yeah, I guess we'll check the uh, uh, central processing next. Life support via central processing five. Okay, upload life support via central processing, ref number eight nine three four Q. Composite monitor readout CME. Parentheses Malay Devore. Vital signs terminated. 
Subject has suffered brain death due to genetic abulia disease. All signs return to steady state. Central processing AI Geneva noted. End upload. Okay. So these, um... It's highly selective, the, uh, the telemetry and life support notices that come in to us. Let's see what her... I reckon there's probably, uh another bit or two of of story available now yeah there's this bit here um, looking back in the first bit about Regent Sable Simi Malay Devore died the day Regent Sable arrived in Springfield West the life support monitors very gradually flattened until she was gone. Her remains slid away to the flashes for recycling. The wall signalled her status. First organ salvage. Kidneys, liver, spleen, pancreas, endocrine glands, pineal, pituitary, adrenals, thyroid, and so forth. Spinal tissue, optics, heart, and lung complex. So many one meter sections of bowel and small intestine circulatory materials and so on for longevity technology centers. Various compounds and essential proteins were extracted. Pre-flash prep, flash dissolution and final analysis of basic compounds. Peter and Ran watched solemnly as her container vanished from view. She produced her fair contribution to others' lives and was gone. Ran turned away, saying nothing. Peter watched him leave the mortuary salon. He knew he would never see his father again. Oh. Well, that's... Uh, pre pretty distressing, I imagine. Okay, what's this? Oh, uh, RS, Regent Sable. So Regent Sable swoops in and becomes... Dad? Peter's group began to move. Within minutes, their room was closed, locked and restored, as if it had been abandoned for many years. Regent Sable and his two searchers passed it on their second sweep of the area. Oh, I see things are getting a bit... a bit tight. Well, it seems like inciting incidents for uh, world population decline are going to happen quite quickly now, possibly? What makes you think you're, they're down there, Hoskins? Bob. Uh, Re Regent asked, his voice echoed in the empty metal hallways. I've had a lot of experience with these types. I've had a lot of experience with these types. The ENC sergeant answered. They're always malcontents. They were malcontents before the elite neutralization corps signed a contract with the old United Nations. And they are still malcontents. With tracking and projection programs, we've managed to keep them pretty well contained. But they crop up now and then. Nothing to worry about. We'll find them. These older warrens aren't well mapped, and we have to go through them foot by foot. We'll find them. What makes you think they're malcontents? Something about Sable's tone made the sergeant straighten an extra fraction. They wouldn't be hiding if they weren't, sir. No, Sable murmured as he checked his bloodhound chemo sensor. I suppose not. I don't think this thing's working. Why's that, sir? Sergeant Hoskins looked over his soldier at the device. Because it caused nothing for this area. No one has passed this way within the time range of the Bloodhound. Not a trace of organics more recent than 12 years ago. We better help the head back a level. Inter okay, we're, we're getting a steady, steady drip feed now, which is kind of how things have gone before. It seems like we're at quite a crucial point in the narrative. The effects are getting more predictable, Peter was saying. I can control when and where, I can direct the fantasy, though not alone, Wonder and I have to agree on it. She's an incredibly strong, brave person. She's done things I have trouble imagining doing, myself doing. Someday, perhaps. Anyway, the technique is feasible. We still don't have a power source, though. I see no possibility of getting one. So what we're onto is still just a possibility. There's nothing in local space with that kind of power output, Rover said. 
Maybe there were. How could we control it? We either keep thinking, Peter began, or we... He was interrupted by a soft chime from a personal auto-sentry module he'd dropped in the corridor two levels below the recreation complex. A hollow formed in the air. Who the hell is it? Shem asked. Three men were moving through the corridors, obviously making a careful search of the sub-cellars. Peter queried the module, which responded with a negative colour. What do you think a negative colour is? If he wanted an ID, he'd have to query Chicago Node directly. Somehow I don't think the Chicago Node will tell us, Peter said. But those two in back are pretty obviously elite neutralisation core cops, right, Laren? She laughed. By the look of them, I'd say yes. Then we'd better close down here. Just in case they're looking for us, we might as well be clean. More? Mm -hmm. Back and forth between Peter and Regent. Something is very seriously wrong, Sable said two hours later. Yes, sir, the ENC sergeant said. We've got a lot on our hands right now. Fighting broke out in St. Louis. Denver and Little Rock Warrens. Casualties are unacceptably high, and almost all available resources have been diverted to those regions. Ed, Corporal Dens, and I are the only personnel you can have right now. I'm sorry. They had appropriated an office in the Springfield West Arcology Tower on the 80th floor. There was some inconvenience in terms of distance and transportation, but they'd also appropriated an exclusive lift for their work, and the advantages of safety, observation and access to the world net outweighed the disadvantages. Besides, the room had a real window. In that case, Sergeant, I think we'd better quit screwing around. CP has done serious projections on this potential techniques of divorce, and it looks like a Code 11 crisis. With the wars going on, we don't have much time for niceties. I want you to go ahead and round them up. Devore, Radix, any others you can find. Yes, sir. Do I have full discretion? Full discretion, Sergeant. Find them and bring them here. Yes, sir. The two ENC cops turned and walked out of the office. Ah, cops. Eh? Well, I hope. Yeah, just keep giving us, keep giving us the story, please. Now, Homer, I'm into it. Jimmy Radix sat in the green light of the hollow scanners. Somewhere in a far darkness, Regent Sable wanted to know things. Jimmy wanted to help, but somehow he didn't seem to know the right answers. Who are you? Regent asked. His voice came out of the amplifiers suddenly distorted with persuasive overtones, with Jimmy's acoustic pressure points precisely targeted. Jimmy looked up. I know that one, he said, smiling broadly. I'm Jimmy Radix. How old are you, Jimmy? Twenty-three, and twenty-three. Take a look, Jimmy. A silvered oval appeared in the air. Jimmy looked at the surface and saw his reflection there. Who's that? Jimmy asked. That's you, Jimmy. That's a reflector in front of you. You're looking at yourself. Does that look like a 23-year-old man, Jimmy? A subsonic persuader was added to the voice at this point, but already Jimmy's vital signs were surging upward. Heartbeat, respiration, adrenaline, adrenaline serotonin and melatonin balances. He went into subtle anaphylactic shock. No! He said, holding up his hands. No, that's not me! I'm young. He began to cry. No, Jimmy. Sable's voice snapped out of the dark. Strange, indefinite, reddish shapes twisted in that darkness as Sable moved. The shapes were frightening, ominous, keyed to Jimmy's fears. He couldn't speak for some moments. The nameless dread was on him. So. I... I'm not... Do you know Peter DeVore? Jimmy Radix shook his head. No, no, I, I don't know, I don't... Peter DeVore, Jimmy, he's your friend. He gave you something, didn't he? A custom chip? Just for you? Isn't that right? Jimmy shook his head back and forth, back and forth. No, no, no. Where's that chip now, Jimmy? Where's your personal monitor? Personal? I don't have one. What's a personal monitor? 
Sergeant Hoskins appeared in the green hollow projection light, like a human shape taking form in smoke. Mr. Sable wants to know where your monitor is, Mr. Radix. Mr. Sable is a reasonable man, but he needs to know. I want to tell him I do. Jimmy looked up hopefully. His eyes were filled with pain. But I don't know. Look at your wrist. See the pale spot where the tan stops. That's where your personal monitor should be. It was there until very recently. You led us on a merry chase. A merry chase. Somewhere you ditched your monitor. Three days, Mr. Radix, we've been after you. Where did you go? I don't... I don't understand. Jimmy looked around wildly. What's the read, Dens? Sable called. A circuit clicked on. Negative, sir. Dens' voice came out of the darkness. There's a faint trace on the interpersonal index key to Peter's name. You might try that once more. We have a complete read on the subject now. Right. The circuit clicked off. All right, Jimmy, Sable said. His voice was calm, reasonable, persuasive. The full power of electronic and subsonic vocal manipulators were in effect. About your friend Peter, do you know where he is now? Peter, Peter, Peter's all right. He's he's all right, isn't he? He's going to uh, to do something. Yes, Jimmy, that's that's very good. He's going to do something, isn't he? He's going to give it to everyone, isn't he? Give it to everyone. Yes, yes, he's going to give it away for everyone. He said he said it would make us all. He stopped. Make us all what, Jimmy? Sable leaned forward in the dark red light. Make us all free? The circuit clicked on. Sir, the readings are all over the place. You'd think, almost think he'd been hit with a mind bomb. Stop him. The light snapped on. Jimmy slumped in his chair. Peter, he mumbled. Peter's gone. He's gone. Goodbye, Peter. He looked up one last time and smiled. You can't fool me, he said. I'm young. Oh, well that was the most intense uh, section of the uh, story we've had so far, I think. Oh, okay. And... Interesting, home is stored there. I think that's probably a good place to leave it for today. That's quite a quite an exciting cliffhanger. I feel like we we um had a slow start and then thundered through quite a lot of um narrative quite quickly there, which is, is intriguing. Um I think there's probably one just one more session in, in this. So we'll stream again soon. Um I am thinking Mm, uh, next week should be good. Maybe, maybe Wednesday, maybe Thursday. Um, but I will update the schedule on Twitch to let people know if you'd like to find out that way. Um, you can. I usually um, change the description of my YouTube channel um, to put the next stream in there, so you can always check there. So that's Catsequences on YouTube. You can find vods of the previous um, streams of this game here. Lots of the games besides the um, VOD for last time's uh, portal session will go up tomorrow. That should that should happen tomorrow, and um, this one will remain on Twitch for two weeks, um, and it will go up fairly soon on YouTube. I'll, I'll try to get up as soon as I can. Um, yeah, and also um, you can check out my Patreon. All posts are public, and I put the uh, I put a, a, a post up in advance of, of every stream to let people know when I'm streaming. So you can find out all those ways if you're interested. Um, and you can obviously follow along on Twitch and subscribe on YouTube. Um, so, yeah, thank you for joining me. I I enjoyed that, actually. it was um, I got really into it at the end. Uh, there was some, some strange and absurd stuff I had to read out along the way. Um, but the, the drama intensified, which I appreciated. So, as we say goodbye, I will say thank you to everyone who's joined me and just call out to, to everybody in chat. So, that's 0AX2, another TV viewer, a service stop, Danking Around, Elysian, Lakaylee, Lana Ray. Thank you very much for joining me, uh, humans and bots alike. 
um, and hope to see you again soon. So take care and see you soon. Bye.